Good Monday morning, my color cams. Welcome to Yoshi's Painting. G Dubs has done it again. Let's talk about it. What is going on, my chromatic friends? My name is Phil, and this is Yoshi's Painting. A little bit something different today. I actually kind of wanted to do some news because some interesting things have surfaced here this morning, the week before Christmas. Um, one of them is MetaWatch, and they've been doing this for quite a bit here, uh, kind of doing their own analysis of the meta of 40K as it relates to U.S. Opens in different states. This is the third and final iteration of the series for this year, and the thing that I found interesting was uh, a couple topics that are very popular in the 40K tournament scene, which is the win first, go first rate, and... Based on their example here, it breaks down to damn near an even 50%, if not an even 50% right off the cuff. <clears throat> I find it interesting because other uh, tournament players uh, and other events have this number drastically different. Um, way up into more this area here at the 75% rate. So uh, I don't know it, how that relates specifically i mean those other tournaments are usually you know four or five rounds so i'm i'm wondering you know given the fact that there was 2010 games measured across this if it over the long term it balances out whereas the short term the numbers skew quite a bit that's something to kind of uh, think about. The other thing that I find interesting is this. Here's the win percentage rates for all of the armies that have been played over those 2010 games. Now, here's the catch. Obviously, the 50% mark is their ideal rate, right? The problem with this list that I have specifically is that they have merged armies they merged all the different forms of eldar they merged all the different forms of chaos and they merged tyranids and gene stealer cults so you my my thought process behind that was is certain variations of these armies have way higher win rates than others so they smash them together to get the overall rates to look better in those specific categories. It's a bit of a conspiracy theory thing, I know, but I would really like to see specifically where Gene Stealer cults landed in this in this list, or where, say, corn landed in this particular list, given how shooty shooty things are. You know, it's interesting that they did that. I hope they don't do that in the future. I hope they, you know, uh, keep them separated out specifically by codex uh, instead of by army type because that could skew the numbers quite a bit. At any rate, it just goes over the rest of the event and some of the standout lists that kind of bucked the curve, so to speak, um, and then some other goofy events like f Fantasy versus 40K and da 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 da, -da. The really interesting thing that kind of hit the 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 uh, hit the screens today on the old YouTubes was the resurrection of cursed city. Uh, good on you, I guess, GW, for getting over whatever hump it was that had to have you stop production of this. Uh, I, I'm gonna go a little conspiracy theory again here um you know this may get out a little into the weeds so forgive the old uh crazy that may come out of my mouth but given the fact that this is happening like this i uh, i want to see specifically this is coming out back in april april of 2021 according to the little magic uh, uh video here I am dying to see if the price point stays the same. The reason I say that is because if the price point goes up by any stretch, 
it tells me that GW wasn't wasn't either making the amount of profit they wanted to or any profit during the first run of Curse City and it ended up costing them more to make than they highly anticipated. So they immediately stopped production of it. Had this six, nine month dry spell. Uh, just as everybody getting over the FOMO of it, only to bring it back. And if it comes back at a higher price point, I think there's going to be hell to pay. Um, having played the game, I I think it's okay. I, I think it could be a bit easy. Um but it's a great little, it's a great game. I mean, it's Warhammer Quest, you know, uh, it's the themed Warhammer Quest. I thought it was a great box. I enjoyed it. Uh, but again, for those that missed out on it, it was really a bummer. And I'm genuinely curious to know when April launches, if this thing's going to come with the same price point that it had this past year. If not, that almost answers the question as to why they stopped production of it and then brought it back later. Uh, but at any rate, you know, for those of you that missed out on it, your chance to grab it is going to be the 10th of April of 2021, right before the old taxes are due here in the U.S. So uh, hopefully you get your refund check shortly thereafter and you can afford the new box. We'll see what happens as more news comes out. I mean, really all you got was the teaser of the undead guy coming out and the date. Uh, with more details pointing to this website that gives you the, hey, it's coming back, cool beans. But it uh, doesn't tell you if it's going to be the same price or not. So, we'll see what happens. Anyway, friends, uh, that's me. And this is the news. And, uh, I, you know, first time doing this. I don't know if I'll keep doing it. Um, it's interesting. I thought that the, the uh, resurrection of Curse City here uh, was very interesting and probably worth a little spot of news. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Um, if you did, please let me know. Uh, comment. Uh, like, subscribe, all that crazy cool stuff. And uh, until next time, friends, we'll keep slapping paint.